which was not what I originally thought I'd preach about when I started looking at the lessons earlier this week. There are so many other things to preach about. Baptism, I love to preach about baptism, and uh, Lent is a good time to lift up the sacrament of baptism, to invite us to renew our baptismal covenant for those of us who are baptized, to ponder the invitation and the welcome that's offered in baptism, not as the epistle says, because we're dirty, but as an appeal to a good conscience before God. But it occurs to me that I don't know that I've ever preached a sermon in my 15 years of plus years of ministry talking about what the good news is. I think there tends to be a fundamental assumption uh, that we say good news and it's a shorthand and that everybody understands what we're talking about. But the gospel this morning, as much as it's about baptism and as much as it's about Jesus's temptation in the wilderness and all of the, the beautiful things that we could talk about the wilderness is a symbol of and the good that happens there as well as the challenges and the, the temptations, the gospel lesson ends with Jesus urgently and in the space of ancient Palestine proclaiming good news. He finds out John has been arrested, or at least we do in the story, and then immediately he goes to Galilee and proclaims the good news of God, saying the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent, which by the way means in the Greek to have second thoughts, to ponder something that is uh, a different, in a different direction from the original pondering, <clears throat> and to believe in the good news. So it occurred to me, maybe it's time I finally unpack that for myself a little bit so that I'm clear about what I'm trying to say when I use the phrase good news as a shorthand and assume that you all know what it means or think the same thing about it as what I mean. So as I talk about it today, I wanna to acknowledge there's always an element of mystery and each of you probably has insights I don't have. So the homework question for the day might be as you go about the week to ponder for yourself, what does good news mean? As you've heard these stories in scripture, as you see the way the world is at work, how can we say uh, that the good news is here, that the kingdom is near? Um, and how do we share that good news? First, what does it even mean, good news? Kurt Vonnegut once said, the truth is we know so little about life we don't really know what the good news is and what the bad news is, which is not necessarily an unsurprising statement from Kurt Vonnegut if you've read some of his works. But the good news is, I believe, uh, summed up quite beautifully in that phrase that many of us had to memorize in Sunday school, God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believed in him would have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son to condemn did not send the son to condemn. So the good news for me, among many other things, goes back to what I said about Ash Wednesday. God hates nothing God has made. God loves us. That's the point of the whole story. It's the bedrock of our religion that God doesn't hate. Now, the history of the church shows that we haven't always understood that or lived it out very well, especially in pointing fingers at other people. We have been, at times, our own worst enemies uh, in terms of evangelism, sharing the good news, because often we've, we've wanted to make the good news available for ourselves, but to point fingers at others, and, and uh, that has put a heavy millstone around their necks. So I think it's important that we remind ourselves what the good news is, love. God loves the creation. God created with love. Our intrinsic nature is good. And the good news to me is that in the ashes that we looked at and had on our foreheads Wednesday is that these were not only meant to make us think about our mortality, or to put it frankly, the fact that we're all going to die one day, but that the ashes are also what we came from. So they remind us not only of our end, they remind us of our beginning. The ashes remind us 
like the phoenix, that there is life coming, even more life, greater life. So they are seeds and yeast, not just nails in a coffin. The good news for me <clears throat> is that we need not be imprisoned by our worst mistakes. We are not the worst. We are not the sum of our worst mistakes because of love. We are the sum of God's love for us. And when we want to share the good news, we have to look at others as well and remind ourselves they too are not the sum of their worst mistakes. It's hard to do. Both of these are hard to do. It's hard to accept being loved for some of us. It's hard to love others who've hurt us or who we think are making unwise decisions or we just don't like. <laughs> but we have to remind ourselves that neither we nor others, even our enemies, are the sum of their worst mistakes, but they are the sum of God's love for them and for us. The good news for me is that we can rise from ashes and we can be free from our former mistakes. And as far as it depends on us, we can strive for peace and reconciliation and justice. The good news to me reminds me that these are possible. Freedom and peace and reconciliation and justice. Because God so loves the world, because the kingdom of God is near and not so far. The good news for me is that in Christ, we have been shown a way to understand and then embody the kingdom of God, so that the time and space of that nearness is now as much as it was in ancient Judea, as much as it will be at the end of time when the clouds are rolled back. The kingdom of God is here and now, and that is manifest when we and people of goodwill follow the way that Christ taught the Christian way. I see it in our discipleship. I see it in the way we live out our faith. I am given hope of this, the truth of this, every time I hear the announcements about all of the outreach that y'all are doing. <laughs> Those are simple signs that are yet as clear as the rainbow in the heavens, that God loves us, and that that love is alive and active in you, Christ Church, and in many other other people. The good news is that you are here in this space and in this time. Christ Church. And as you follow the one whose name we all bear as Christians, people's lives are touched and seeds are planted, seeds that may not even grow in our lifetime, but one day will be seen and understood as the results of lives that have experienced the truth of God's love and through that truth, find courage, people in their lives find courage and conviction to love others. So that that kingdom of God, the love, ripples outward. The, the good news is that the kingdom is still here and near and with us in our time and space. It's not just the way things were as Christ walked the earth. It's not just the way things will be when the clouds are rolled back. It is right now, right here in this space where we are gathered together to pray, to share the way that we can to help others. Lent is a good opportunity to focus back on what it means to be disciples of Christ and to believe in the way of Christ, the kingdom of God, revealed in Jesus and our discipleship so that we can help others to stop living from the hatred that may infect their own hearts or that may surround them and be free from that hatred so that they too can join us in this journey of love, the journey of Christ. And so that in our own lives, we can point the way the way that can be walked, the way of Christ. 
So I invite you in this Lent to think about that question of what is the good news for you? How do you experience the good news as being near to you? Do you see it? Do you perceive it? Where and how? This is the time of the good news. It is urgently needed in the world that we live in. When we watch the news, we see so many places of hurting, from the gunshots that, at what was supposed to be a celebratory party uh, for the folks who beat the 49ers, <clears throat> to what's happening in Russia and Ukraine. Um, all around the world, we see this, and even in our own, in our own neighborhood. The world needs the good news. How do we continue and magnify what we are doing as followers of Christ to make that love, to remind ourselves that we are loved, and then to make that love known in the world around us? Thanks for letting me ask the question. Thank you for the ways you're already doing that. Whether you know it or not, you are doing it. Um, and may God continue to bless each one of us as we live in the truth of this good, good news. Amen. Let us stand together and reaffirm the faith of the church in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God. Peace of the Lord be always with you.
and we extend our peace to those who are online joining us now or later. <laughs> now and forever, yeah. Good morning, everyone. I just want to start off with a note about the postlude, since I didn't, the postlude didn't make it into the bulletin this week. Um, fully at my own fault, I admit. Uh, so the postlude today will be um, by Johann Sebastian Bach, Ich ruf zu dir. I'll give you the translation. I call to thee, Lord Christ. This is a, a um, chorale text, which is um, sort of a, a hymn, hymn tune at the time. So I'll, I'll just read you the full, full translation of the, of the verse. I call to thee, Lord Christ. O oh, hear my sore complaining. In thy good time, unto me list thine ear to me inclining. True faith in thee, O Lord, I seek. Make me now and, hol and wholly love thee solely. My neighbor hold as self and keep thy word ere holy. So you can hold that sentiment in your heart um, during the postlude. So announcements, I think, uh, Kathy, do you wanna start? Okay, I'll do. Um, so in the back on the table is a card for Nicole. Her uh, brother died last week and she was in New York. And so if you would sign it and sign something nice to her, we'll give her that card uh, on Tuesday when things are back. So that would be nice. Um, we're not going to have a Lenten dinner series this year. Hopefully next year we'll be prepared to do that. But Christ Church Los Altos has a nice program and they have uh, kindly invited all of us to join their program if you'd like. And you'll see online and in our uh, weekly bulletin all of the events going on at Christ Church Los Altos. We are collaborating with them during this time while we're rebuilding and waiting to get a new director. And they're allowing us um, access to any and all of their programs. And we will continue to put those in the bulletin as we go forward. Um, we'll be adding our own new things to that bulletin too, sometime in the near future. Alter Guild really would like some help. So um, Betsy has uh, put out the plea and said, would you please help with Alter Guild? And so it's not a hard task. And if you would see Betsy, she could use some help there. And the pledge drive, please. Uh, if you haven't yet pledged, please do so. We're a bit behind and we have a exciting year to go forward with and we we need those pledges so please do that and with that kathy through outreach we are all children of god and we love our neighbors as ourselves every week this week we give you the opportunity to help out with um, two things one, um, we are, have a large uh, toiletry drive going on to benefit uh, Redwood Family House, um, which is a shelter for 10 families in Redwood City, and um, also Coast House over in Half Moon Bay, which houses 84 people, including um, 15 children. And so we are still in need of uh, shampoo, conditioner, deodorant, toilet paper, body wash, and some laundry detergent. So if you have the capacity to do help with any of those, that would be wonderful. Um, we will be taking over our second delivery um, this week to Redwood Family House early in the week. And so, and then um, uh, Coast House after that. And so um, if you can help out. Uh, back to the East. And so I asked um, uh, Reverend Michael if he would give the two of you a blessing today for your, your journey to come. So if you would come up. Great. I'll move this back a little bit. So we, here we go. I'll come to y'all. Yeah. Why don't you face the community? And I'll invite you all to extend your hands with me as a sign of blessing as we are it's the priesthood of all believers. We can all bless one another. <clears throat> May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Bless you. Thank you. 
Come back and visit. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice unto God. The Lord be with you. And with my spirit. Lift up your hearts. <laughs> Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Heavenly Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying,
be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the memorial thy son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with us as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.